Welcome to this Mass Made Easy video on proof. To start with, let's take a look at skill one here on proof notation. Now the following notation will be used throughout proofs, but will also be relevant to topics later in the course. A set is a collection of objects or numbers called elements. And a set is denoted using a capital letter and curly brackets are used to show what belongs to the set. So for example here, we could have the set A, which has the elements three, four, and five here, okay? Now, there's different ways we can write sets. So this way here is one example where we list our elements like so. So that's the set A with those three elements. We can write sets as a rule. So for example, if we've got the set B here, we can write this as, for example, the prime numbers between 0 and 10. So we write this out in full. These prime numbers between 0 and 10. Okay. And finally, we can use mathematical notation. So if I write this out in full first and then explain what this means. So this is the set C here. And in mathematical notation, this simply means the values of x such that x is greater than 5. Okay. So that gives us the different types of notation there when using sets. There are different variations of an equal sign that you need to be aware of. And for this, what I'm going to do is use a different pen colour. So this is for when we're talking about different variations of an equal sign. The first example here is an equal sign with a slash through the middle. And you may be familiar with this example here, or maybe all three examples here for the different variations. And in this case, this simply means not equal to. Okay, so that's not equal to. Our second different variation here is this symbol. And this simply means approximately equal to. So approximately, approximately equal to. And finally, our third variation here of the equal symbol is this symbol. Okay. And what this means is two things are equivalent. And this is called the identity symbol. So this is used when two things are equivalent. Two things are equivalent. Like we said, this is called the identity symbol. Okay. And finally, again, let's choose a different color here just to highlight now what we're moving on to, which is the logic symbols. So there's some logic symbols that you need to understand. So the first type here is P with this arrow pointing towards Q. And this means if P, then Q. Or in other words, P implies Q. So P implies Q. Okay. Our second logic symbol here, again using P and Q, is P. And this time the arrow points both ways. And in this case, this means P if and only if Q. Or P implies Q and Q implies P. So let's write that in full. So P implies Q. and Q implies P. Okay. And note here that if and only if can be written as IFF. So if and only if can be written as IFF. So it can be written Okay, so IFF. You might see that sometimes in textbooks. So that's important to note there. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for skill one on proof notation. Moving on to skill two now, which is direct proof. So a direct proof, sometimes known as proof by deduction, is a proof where a statement is proven to be true using fundamental mathematical principles. 
So, in this example here, we want to prove that n squared minus 6n plus 11 is positive for any integer. So to do this, all we simply need to do here is complete the square. So completing the square here would give us n minus 3. We'd square this expression here. And then we need to take the square, or the negative square of minus 3. So if we square minus 3, that would give us 9. So we need minus 9 here. And then we add on the original part here of 11. Now if we simplify this, we get n minus 3 all squared. Minus 9 plus 11 gives us plus 2. Now if we consider this here in two parts, we've got the n minus 3 all squared and we've got the plus 2. Now n minus 3 all squared will always be positive and the reason for that is because this is a square number. So in that case, if we just add 2 to this square number then, in that case the result will also be positive. Okay, so a positive number here plus another positive number will also give us a positive number. Okay, so in that case then, we can say n squared minus 6n plus 11 is positive for any integer. Okay. And again, if we just highlight y here, because this part here is positive, and then if we add a positive number to this positive part, again, it will always be positive. So that gives us everything we need there for skill two on direct proof. Moving on to skill three now, which is taking a look at proof by exhaustion. In a proof by exhaustion, you will need to break situations down into two or more cases and try all possibilities to prove that the statement holds true for each case. So let's take a look at this example then, where we're asked to prove the following statement. For any integer x, f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 3x minus 2 is an even integer. So here we need to split the statement into two cases, when x is an even number and when x is an odd number. So first let's take a look at when x is even. So if x is even, and in that case we can write x as being equal to 2n. So if we replace x then with 2n, we obtain f of 2n is equal to 3 lots of 2n all squared plus 3 lots of 2n and finally minus 2. So in that case 2n all squared would give us 4n squared times by 3 which would give us 12n squared. 3 lots of 2n would give us 6n and finally minus 2 there. So here to show this is an even integer we can just factor a 2 out. So this gives us 2 lots and in our bracket here, we can write this as 6n squared plus 3n minus 1. Okay, so as n is an integer, that means 6n squared plus 3n minus 1 is also an integer. And therefore, as a result, two lots of an integer will also be an integer. And more specifically, it will be an even integer. So therefore, f of x is even when x is even. Okay, so that's the first case, that's when x is even. Now what we want to consider is when x is odd. Okay, so if x is odd, this is our second case, and we'll represent this in blue now. So if x is an odd number, then we can write x as being equal to 2m plus 1. Okay, for some integer m. Then in that case, f of x becomes f of 2m plus 1, like so. So f of 2m plus 1, and this is equal to 3 lots of 2m plus 1 all squared, plus 3 lots of 2m plus 1, and finally minus 2 there. So here now, this is just a matter of simplifying this right hand side. So if here, if you were to expand 2m plus 1 all squared, that would be 2m plus 1 times 2m plus 1, okay? Well, that would clearly give us 4m squared. So that's 4m squared plus 2m plus another 2m, so that would give us plus 4m. And finally, 1 times 1 gives you plus 1. 
So we times all of this by 3 then. What that gives us is 12m squared. So we get 12m squared plus 12m plus 3. We've now got 3 lots of 2m and then 3 lots of 1. So that's going to give us plus 6m plus 3. And finally we've got a minus 2 here at the end. Okay. And again, we just need to keep simplifying. So in that case, we get 12m squared. We've got 12m plus 6m, so that would give us 18m. And finally here, we've got 3 plus 3, which is 6, minus the 2, giving us plus 4. So here, just like we did when x was even, we can factor a 2 out. So it's going to give us 2 lots of 6m squared plus 9m plus 2. So, as m is an integer, that means 6m squared plus 9m plus 2 will also be an integer, and therefore 2 lots of that integer will also be an integer, and again, specifically, will be an even integer. So therefore, f of x is even when x is odd. Okay. And therefore, f of x is even for any integer x, and that proves the following statement. So that gives us everything we need there for skill 3 on proof by exhaustion. And finally, moving on now to skill 4, which is disproof by counterexample. So to disprove a statement by a counterexample, all we need to do is show that the statement is false for one case. So in this example here, we want to disprove the following statement. For any pair of real numbers x and y, if x squared is equal to y squared, then x is equal to y. So here we'll need to find one set of values such that the statement is false. So let's take x equals 3 and y equals minus 3. Okay. Well in this case x squared is equal to 3 squared which is equal to 9. And for y squared here that's going to be equal to minus 3 squared, which would also be equal to 9. So therefore, we can see x squared is equal to y squared. And if x squared is equal to y squared, then x is equal to y. However, we've reached an issue here because in this case, x is equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 3. And in that case, clearly, x is not equal to y. Okay. So that tells us the statement is not true and gives us our example here of disproof by counter example. And that concludes this Mass Made Easy video on proof.